Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we added request mapping annotation to our API and we saw how can we use request mapping annotation to neatly arrange the controllers in the API code base. In this video, we are going to learn request parameters and we will see how can we use request parameters to make the API responsive and dynamic. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the future updates. Let's get started. You can see this is the same API code base in which we added the health controller. For this video, we have added a new controller which is the user controller. You can see the annotation rest controller and the request mapping. And notice that we are using a different URL pattern this time which starts with users. And this controller has a single method greet which is annotated with get mapping and it again has its own URL pattern which is greet which is returning a hard coded value hello guest. So based on this request mapping and the URL given in the get mapping, the final URL of the greet method would look something like this, which is the base address of the API localhost colon 8080 users, which is coming from here and greet, which is specific to this method. So if we try to hit this URL, the service is up and running. We see hello guest, which is as expected. And no matter how many times we make this API call, there will be no change in the response. It is going to be hello guest because the response is hard coded. Now let's say we want to make this dynamic. And by dynamic, I mean, let's say we want to pass the username as well so that every time when we are making this API call, we can pass a username and in the response, we get the message hello and the username. So how do we do that? There are a couple of ways to pass the values in an API call. The first one that we are going to see in this video is request parameter. What are the request parameters? And to pass the request parameter, we use this syntax. After the URL, we add the question mark, then the parameter name, which could be anything, let's say this, equal sign and the parameter value. What that means is it means we are passing this request parameter whose value is param value and similarly we can pass multiple parameters as well. To pass the multiple parameters we need to add the ampersand and then we can add additional request parameters like this param1 value1. Notice all these request parameters are in the form of key value pairs where key is the name of the parameter and the value is the value that we are passing for that request parameter and we can separate the multiple parameters using ampersand sign so in this particular example when we are making this api call we are passing two request parameters param name and param1 that is the request parameter and before that let's correct the url because in this case we need to pass the username so the request parameter name in this case would be username and we will pass a username something like this dummy user which could be anything but the important thing is the name of the parameter will remain same username the value would change okay so how do we consume this request parameter using request param so first of all if we want to consume the request parameter we need to pass them as the method parameter now in this case because we want to consume a single request parameter username we can add a method argument or a method parameter in the method definition let's name it name for example and then instead of guest we will say hello name that part is done but how do we pass this value to this method how do we bind this value to do that we will use request parameter annotation like this and it accepts some values like name username okay so let's try to understand what's going on here we added a parameter here name and then we are using this parameter in the method body but how are we passing this value to do that we are using request param annotation and it's a hint to spring boot that when you call this method you need to check the request parameter in the url and if you find a request parameter with this name which is the username fetch the value 
and assign that value to this name parameter when you call this method so it's all handled by the spring boot we don't need to do anything we just need to define this mapping and when a client would call this particular url by passing the request parameter spring boot will do all this conversion and assignment automatically so the resulting url in this case would look something like this username which is the name of request parameter equals to passed value this is the value that we will pass while making the api call let's now rerun the api and try this particular method call the api is up and running let's copy the url and paste it here and this time let's pass a username let's say tom and if we hit enter we see hello tom change the name and we see hello ajay as a result of this api call spring boot knows that it has to call this create method but this time it will see that there is a request parameter with this name so it will fetch the value it will assign that value to this name parameter while calling the greet method and this value is now accessible in the method body and in this case we are simply printing the value now there is one more thing in this setup we can omit this part if the name of this parameter exactly matches with the name of request parameter what that means is if we change this name to username then it matches with this request parameter name and in that case we can omit this part because it has the same name so let's rerun the api the service is up and running and we can try the same url again and we got the correct response and if we change the username to let's say ray we see hello ray as you can see this is much cleaner and easier to understand okay moving on so we know that this method is expecting a request parameter with name username but what if we don't provide one in this url if we don't provide the request parameter what would happen let's try that so if we go back to the browser and if we simply remove the request parameter and hit enter we see the error and it says bad request because we are not passing the request parameter which is expected here so how do we solve it in such cases if we want to make this request parameter optional we can annotate it as nullable it means this value can be null and if we annotate this particular method parameter as nullable and if we don't provide the request parameter it will not report an error it will simply pass the null value so if we rerun the api the server is up let's go back to the browser and remove the request parameter again and this time if we hit enter we don't see any error but we see username null because that's what we mentioned yet it's nullable there is one more way to achieve the same thing instead of using at the rate nullable we can use the required attribute of the request parameter we can mark it false so we are saying this parameter is not required and if we retry the same thing again and if we retry the request we see no difference in the output we see hello null it means this request parameter is optional so if you don't provide one the null value will be assigned to this one we can also provide an optional value in such cases so let's say uh, default value dummy what we are saying that first of all this request parameter is optional and second if no value is passed then use this default value dummy otherwise use the value that the user has passed let's rerun the api the server is up and we can go back to the browser if we retry the same request we see this time it is using the default value dummy but if we pass a valid value username mark so in this case it will use the value that we have passed so these are some of the things that we can do with request parameter that's how we use the request param annotation to read the request parameters that's it for now that's it for this video stay tuned for next videos
थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग